I'd like to thank KTMS 990 and Montecito Bank and Trust for making Scam Squad possible. I'm Patty Teal. And I'm Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. Scam Squad is up next. Sound off. One, one two. two. Sound off. Three, four. One, one two, three, four. Scam Squad. Welcome to Scam Squad. I'm Patty Teal, and I'm here again with Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson, who always apprises us of the scams going on in the Santa Barbara area. And we have our wonderful regular guest and sponsor from Montecito Bank and Trust, and I'm going to let Vicki introduce her. Hi, Patty. We're always happy to have Sean Dyer back. Sean is the Assistant Vice President and Senior Fraud Specialist for Montecito Bank and Trust, and she is on the front lines. So it's always good to find out what's going on and be apprised of what scams are targeting our community these days. So welcome, Sean. Thank you. Tell us what's up. What are you seeing at the bank? Well, currently we're experiencing some of our regular type of fraud, but it just keeps recirculating. I have a couple different types that I'll talk about today. We have the Craigslist overpayment scam and then also a tech support scam. So I'll start with the Craigslist overpayment scam. Everyone knows about Craigslist and you can buy and sell items on there. And we have had several customers who are selling something. So they list something on Craigslist and they get a response through Craigslist of someone who's interested in purchasing the product or whatever it is, and they send them a check. It starts that simple and you think, oh, great, I've sold my item. However, there are several red flags right away. The check is never from the person they spoke to. Most often it's from a business and it's a counterfeit check that has been created. Secondly, the check is for much more than what the item is listed for sale. And then the person who is buying the product says, I've sent you a check for more money because I would like you to pay a shipper who will come collect the item and deliver it to me. And you can keep an extra amount on top for going through all that trouble but I'll need you to pay the shipper right away. So deposit that check and then go withdraw a certain amount and Western Union it to the shipper. Bottom line, of course, there is no shipper that address and name that they want you to send that extra money to is actually the fraudster. Two, the check that you received is counterfeit, stolen, altered, whatever. It's not a valid check and it will be returned and debited from your account. And that's usually long after the fraudsters are gone. No one's buying anything. So whatever you're trying to sell, you still have that product. You know, I think that's a really good red flag. And one I wouldn't have thought about or wouldn't have known about is that the check is from not the person you're speaking to. So it's not a personal check. It's from a supposed business. And so it's a completely counterfeit, manufactured, phony check. And I think that's a really interesting distinction to make. I personally am probably the only person around that's never bought or sold anything on Craigslist. So (laughs) I don't know how it typically goes, but that's certainly something that I wouldn't have known about since I've never entered into these transactions before. So do people usually meet in person to make the exchange money for product or how does it usually work? Well, furniture is what myself have ever even gone out and looked on Craigslist for. So it's not that I am selling, it's usually that I'm buying. But my son has sold a piece of furniture before. So yeah, the person actually came to the driveway. There's a couple things about Craigslist. Also, when you do something through Craigslist, you are corresponding through Craigslist. So you can make it a public listing or private where you're not providing your phone number or address. It's just a listing number. And you communicate that way. Another red flag is the fraudsters will quickly try to get you outside of the Craigslist thread so that Craigslist can't track any of it. So they'll say, hey, call me on my phone or text me at this or email me at my own personal thing so that they get you away 
from Craigslist. Because of course, Craigslist also all over it says, beware of scams, beware of scams. So the fraudsters are really good at trying to get you off of that. So that's not top of mind. Right. And I forgot one more besides the check being from some business, the letter, the envelope, because these checks usually arrive via FedEx or overnight. The return address is also a different person or business. So you really have the name on the envelope, a different name on the check, and a third name of who you're doing business with. You know, anytime that you receive an overpayment for anything, you just have to know it's a scam. There's a yeah. tech support scam that works that way too, where you supposedly are owed some money from a company that's providing support. They're going to repay you and then they send you too much money. There's an extra zero there. And oh my gosh, I've sent you too much money. The scammer tells you you have to get the money back to Anytime you have a situation where somebody is giving you too much money, you have to really think this is a scam. This is not for real. If it's too good to be true, it is. <laughs> as, as, our, as our mothers used to tell us, and they were right. <laughs> well, and, and Vicki, you're leading me right into the other common thing that we're just seeing regularly is the tech support scam. So just a reminder to the listeners, don't click on any links. Don't click on a pop-up that shows up on your computer. Don't call that number that shows up on your screen. Do your homework. Go out and look for a number if you think you have malware or a problem with your computer. But we are seeing it quite a bit. And customers are receiving it on their smartphones. So they're getting a text and they're clicking on a link and, and it's going through and it's kind of hijacking their phone. And I don't know enough about how that whole process works. I'm basing that solely on the calls that we have received that they, you know, their phone was taken over once they clicked on the link that had to do with someone saying, oh, you know, your software has been compromised on your computer. We'll help you click here. Wow. So they suck you in by telling you you have a problem. And then... Mm -hmm. And again, that sense of urgency. That sense of urgency and sort of fear. Oh my gosh, malware. And then, oh, they have the solution. They have the way to fix your problem. So while you're sort of under the anxiety of, oh my gosh, I've got a problem. Well, thank God there's a solution handy right here. And so what happens after that? Do they then tell you, well, you have to give remote access of the computer to us so we can fix the problem? Yeah, and And go buy gift cards. It's just the same story. Nothing good ever comes from purchasing a gift card unless you really are going to go give someone a gift card that you know in person for a gift. For a gift, for an actual gift. It should never be used as a form of payment. (laughs) Yes, what a thought. Yeah, that's very good advice. If it's going to be used as a form of payment, if that's how you're asked to pay a utility bill or some kind of debt that you are supposedly owing, or maybe because you forgot jury duty and there's a warrant out for your arrest and we can get the warrant recalled if you go buy a gift card or you owe Mm -hmm. money for any reason, go get a gift card. Yeah, no. Government agencies do not ask you to pay by gift card. In fact, most businesses, I'm sure, don't ask you to pay by gift card. So big red flag, the gift card. Yes. Those are two good scams to know about. And I've been hearing a lot about those too. I've been getting some calls in on my front hotline telling me about these scams. Interestingly enough, I got a phone call today from a senior who I've talked to before pretty sharp woman. And she just calls me periodically to update me and tell me the kind of calls that she's getting because she's obviously a targeted person. And she said she got a call from supposedly PayPal telling her that she owed some money to PayPal for a continued service that she had signed up for. She told me that she had PayPal 15 years ago, canceled the service, and there was no way that she owed them any money for a continued service, a continued bill that she'd signed up for. But thankfully, she was sharp enough to realize that these were scammers, and she didn't immediately go to the number that they gave her to call if there was a problem, call this number. She said, no, there's no problem. I already know I never signed up for this service. And if I call the number, they're just going to use it to get information from me. So I said to her, well, good for you. Thank goodness you're sharp enough to have seen it. But she wanted to alert me that this is also going on out there. So I thought, good to know, and I'll share it on Scam Absolutely. Yeah, we've heard of that. 
Yeah, they lure you in with a service they are either guessing, because many, many people use PayPal, or it could be Amazon, anything. But, you know, so many people use these online services whether it's a payment method or ordering, the odds are pretty good that if they're cold calling, that they're going to get someone to answer because they have, in fact, used that service or, or payment yeah, method. Scammers really play the percentages, don't they? Like an ordering on Amazon, most people do that. So you get a message from mm-hmm. Amazon saying that they're going to deliver something that costs way more than you would have ever paid for anything on Amazon. Plus, you never ordered the item in the first place. And then, of course, they give you that convenient number to call if there's a mistake or if there's a problem. And that's how you get sucked into the scammer's web. Well, anything else that you're seeing, Sean, or is that it for today? That's keeping us busy. That in the usual <laughs> stuff, Rob. So it's just a- <laughs> Never a dull moment. (laughs) Never a dull moment. Thank you so much. And we appreciate Montecito Bank and Trust and all they do to keep the community safe. Vicki, do we have good news today? We do. And you know, Patty, because I really want to encourage people to report scams to the FBI, IC3.gov or Federal Trade Commission, FTC.gov, I always like to tell stories about when scammers get caught. Because so many times people think, well, I make the report, nothing ever happens, there's no chance we're ever going to catch these people. And then I get a new bulletin from the Department of Justice telling me that once again, yes, we have caught one of these scammers. So here's the headline. I always like to read the headline. Convicted Bronx fraudster who fled to Ghana prior to serving sentence is extradited to the United States. So this fraudster was originally from Ghana. He was living in New York. He was a member of a criminal enterprise based in Ghana. And he and his co-conspirators were working the romance scams plus the business email compromise scams. They defrauded over 100 Americans and American businesses. They collected about $10 million through these scams. And thankfully, the FBI caught up with this fraudster from Ghana before he was able to flee the country. They investigated the case. They prosecuted the case. They convicted him. And before he was supposed to report for sentencing, he fled back to Ghana, thinking, of course, that there's no way the United States is going to get him back. In fact, I guess he was wearing an ankle bracelet cut off his ankle bracelet and fled. Well, the FBI was able to track him down, bring him back. And of course, the minute he set foot on American soil, once again, right to prison, he went. So, Patty, these people do get caught. It is worthwhile to make the report. And I really encourage our listeners to do so if they ever get caught up in any kind of a scam. Yeah, thank you for that great reminder, Vicki. And if they want to call you locally, would you remind our listeners of your fraud hotline number? Absolutely. It's area code 805-568-2442. So once again, 805-568-2442. Thank you so much, Vicki and Sean. What a great episode and great reminders today. Take care. Until next week. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye.